Welcome to Uncomplicating Weight Loss and Life. I'm your host, Eva Rodriguez, former HR executive turned holistic life, health, and weight loss coach. In this podcast, I'll teach you how to lose weight without dieting, how to exercise to burn fat and reshape your body, and how to lose the mental and emotional weight that keeps you stuck. My life has given me lots of twists, turns, and traumas, but instead of defeating me, it's made me strong as fuck. I've been able to turn my hot mess into a fiery message that if I can transform my health and my life, so can you. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Once upon a time, not long ago, I hated myself. My self-loathing wasn't actually visible to the naked eye. In fact, I never uttered those words out loud because that's harsh, right? And how could anyone even respond to someone saying that besides with platitudes? Oh, don't say that. You don't mean that. Oh, but I did. In my life, my self-hatred has always manifested as an unrealistic, relentless pursuit of perfection, of a very polished aesthetic, of a perpetually unbothered persona mixed with a very dangerous side of reckless impulsivity. See, I've been depressed most of my life, but unless you were really paying attention, you probably wouldn't have known. I mean, my own parents didn't know about my depression. They never knew about my suicide attempts. They never knew about my abusive relationships. They never knew about my disordered eating. I'd always just been really good at hiding my real self. And I always thought that if people knew who the real Eva was, they wouldn't like her. They'd find her weird. So... I would pretend that everything was okay, even when it wasn't, even when my life was falling apart. And I'm pretty sure I learned how to do that when I was five years old. Fast forward to my very first coaching certification, which was my health coach certification from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition back in 2019. And there was a lecture about self-love that resonated with me so much that I thought I wanted to be a self-love coach. When I was a brand new baby coach, I was so eager to just share all the things I was learning and all the new concepts that I was applying to my life. And I mean, nobody had ever taught me how to love myself. And so I was certain that there were probably so many other women just like me who also needed to learn this phenomenon. I was so convinced that this was the solution to low self-esteem, for sure. This was around the time that the self-care and self-love movement really started to take off on social media, and I was even asked by several organizations to do workshops on self-love and self-care, so I thought I was an expert at this shit. But behind closed doors, I would always hit a wall with my own self-love journey. See, I understood it from a rational, logical level, right? Yes, we start with self-awareness, self-respect, self-trust. I fully understood that you couldn't go from hate to love. It was just too big of a jump. You had to ladder your way to neutral. I understood all of that. But my self-love journey would always get derailed by my outside circumstances. I would get so deeply impacted by my feelings of rejection that would then trigger my I'm not good enough wound, my I'm not enough, I've never been enough, I'll never be enough wound, and I would spiral all the way back down into this labyrinth of self-doubt and self-hate. After going through this multiple times, I realized something was missing. Similar to last week's episode where I shared how learning about attachment styles completely transformed my life and my healing journey, 
And I was introduced to attachment styles when I was reading a book about something seemingly unrelated. Today, I'm going to tell you about two more life-changing tools that I learned when I was reading a book about healing from grief and heartbreak. And those two tools are inner child and outer child work. The name of the book is The Journey from Abandonment to Healing, Turn the End of a Relationship into the Beginning of a New Life by Susan Anderson. I highly recommend it, and I will link it in the show notes. I found this book sometime in 2021 when I was dealing with a pretty tough breakup that really triggered my depression. It was the end of my pandemic situationship that really sent me into this weird place because It was a type of rejection that I'd never experienced before. Without going into all of the stupid details, for the first time in my life, this man told me that I was too old for him. It's finally funny to me now in hindsight, but it was a huge shock that sent me spiraling at the time because I was about to turn 40. And I was really struggling with the number and the idea of getting old. And here comes this idiot who, by the way, was only two years younger than me. But he was stuck on wanting more children, plural, even though he already had one teenager. He apparently wanted babies. And I would say I was always about 95% sure that I didn't want to have any more children after Christian, that I was one and done. But I mean, I've thought about it. I've considered it. I've wondered, should I have another? But I was pretty sure that I was done. Still, when someone brings that up to you, you do think about it, right? You do give it thought and what would my life look like in that situation? And this man was very adamant that women over 35 should not have kids. However, that thought process did not stop him from wasting many months of my life. And one thing I've learned is that men have no qualms about wasting your goddamn time if you let them. But anyway, fuck that guy. He was an idiot. The important thing is, during this time, I had fallen into a very dark place. On my 40th birthday, I was in Turks and Caicos, drinking martinis on the beach, crying my heart out and saying to myself, I'm too old now and no one's ever going to want to date me. I know this sounds ridiculous. It's about to get even more ridiculous because I also went a little bit overboard with the Botox and my face was frozen. Now, if you've never gotten Botox before, it's amazing. I highly recommend it. However, If you get too much and your face is frozen and then you cry, it feels very weird because like your face doesn't move. (laughs) I looked so ridiculous. It was a sight to see. Not my finest moment. Needless to say, I was a disaster and I internalized everything and I made it mean that there was something terribly wrong with me as a person. While I had heard of inner child work before, I didn't fully understand the purpose of it, and I definitely hadn't heard of outer child work. But when I finally dove deep into this work, I realized that this was the missing piece to my self-love puzzle. This was the work that I didn't know I needed to do. And once again, I found myself really annoyed that out of all the damn therapists that I've worked with over the years, over the decades, including the one that I was seeing at that time, none of those motherfuckers ever mentioned this work. Why? I don't fucking know. And this is also why I'm doing this Eva's Transformational Toolkit series, because there are so many healing modalities and revolutionary tools that maybe aren't as traditional or well-known. And if we're not actively seeking them out, we end up missing out never learning these things or prolonging our healing journey. And I don't fucking like it. So when I started learning about inner child work, I realized I had a long way to go and no amount of affirmations, journaling, meditations was ever going to get me to stop hating myself, 
to stop sabotaging myself or to stop blaming myself every time things didn't work out as planned. It was too easy for me to go back to that dark place because of this little thing called neural pathways. Now, the concept of the inner child is often considered the foundation of personal growth and well-being. The inner child represents the emotional and vulnerable parts of ourselves that may have been neglected or unsupported during our formative years. When this part of ourselves is not properly cared for and nurtured, it can lead to negative self-esteem, self-defeating behaviors, and a lack of fulfillment in our lives. The inner child represents our emotional and vulnerable side and is associated with feelings of hurt, fear, and pain, but also abandonment, rejection, humiliation, betrayal, and injustice. The inner child is the source of our emotional core and is a really important part of our overall well-being. Working with the inner child involves the process of reparenting ourselves and taking on the role of a loving and supportive adult who's able to make choices that serve our inner well-being, like learning to recognize and manage our emotions and setting boundaries, something that a lot of us with childhood trauma or neglect never learn to do. I'm going to share one of my favorite exercises that you can try at the end of this episode that has been totally transformational for me and for my clients who have done my self-love for weight loss mini training. So stay tuned for that. It's a really powerful exercise. Now there's your inner child and then there's your outer child. One of the key insights of Susan Anderson's work is that the outer child and inner child are often in conflict with our adult self. Your outer child is the part of your personality that breaks your diet, gets attracted to all the wrong people, goes on a shopping spree when she's having a bad day. The outer child acts out your inner child's abandonment issues in ways that sabotage your relationships. Our outer child is the impulsive, obstinate, self-centered 10-year-old within all of us. Outer wants what outer wants now and will overrule you, the adult, to get its way. For example, outer prefers to binge on candy when you're trying to stick to a healthy meal plan. Outer will say, oh, absolutely, to that third glass of wine when you, the adult, had already decided on a two-drink limit. Outer lounges around watching TV when you, the adult, had previously decided to go to the gym. Your outer child's patterns develop as automatic defenses and knee-jerk habits for reducing stress and increasing pleasure. Your outer child literally lives and functions by the motivational triad. The outer child is going to avoid pain, seek pleasure, and conserve as much energy as she needs to. Unresolved abandonment from past or present wounds fuel our outer child with uncomfortable primal emotions. For example, When your inner child feels lonely for love, your outer child jumps in to quickly satisfy this need by chasing some unavailable person or by aiming its neediness and desperation at a particular person and scaring them away or by emotionally shutting down and running away or starting arguments with the people that you love. Keeping tabs on your outer child empowers you to overcome your self-defeating patterns, improve your relationships, and become more self-possessed. The author, Susan Anderson, has an outer child inventory that I'll link in the show notes as well. What you do is you circle the thoughts that you recognize in yourself, and then it gives you even more awareness about your character that can help you deal with the behavioral patterns that, until now, formed an invisible infrastructure of self-sabotage deep within your personality. Something that the author mentions is, don't expect your outer child to take being exposed sitting down. Your outer child hates change, especially change initiated by you, the adult. Your outer child will continue to balk at doing the right thing and will prefer to do things that are bad for your health, your body, and your bank accounts. By bringing outer out of the bunkers and into the daylight, you get to subvert its mission instead of letting it subvert your mission. Our outer child is fueled by emotion, particularly anger. Outer either overreacts or underreacts to anger. 
For example, abandonment survivors tend to be too insecure to risk expressing anger or assertiveness directly to someone because they fear it might break the connection. So your outer child takes advantage of this fear by getting you to take out your anger on yourself instead, damaging your own self-esteem. Your outer child also tends to displace your anger onto innocent bystanders such as friends or family, oftentimes creating unnecessary conflict with the very people that you seek support and validation from. Think of your outer child as the yes but of your personality. Your adult self knows what you need to do to improve. But your outer child always comes up with excuses to postpone, delay, or not do them. Your outer child's favorite time to accomplish constructive things is later. And if you let it, your outer child will continue to tie up your future goals in knots. Your outer child likes to play games, especially in relationships. It wears many disguises, including hard to get, and what I call doing the most. Your outer child swings on an emotional pendulum between fear of abandonment and fear of entrapment. In the first instance, you become super insecure. In the second, you become turned off and hypercritical. It poses as your ally, but it's really your gatekeeper. Its covert agenda is to maintain your patterns, particularly your most self-defeating ones. So in order to tame your outer child, you have to start by deconstructing your outer child's defenses in order to guide your behavior away from the self-sabotage and impulsiveness. Otherwise, your outer child thrives on creating drama, distorting who you really are. So if you think about it this way, your adult self is responsible for nurturing your inner child and taming your outer child so that you can reach your potential in life, so that you can achieve your goals, and so that you can have more inner peace in order to get to a place of unconditional self-love. And you'll never get to that place if you don't have the inner peace. So you see how this is such an integral part of your healing and your self-love journey. Because if you have all of this internal turmoil between your inner child, outer child, and current self, it's impossible to see the light. So I started with doing inner child work. And I recommend starting there as well because you need to understand your inner child in order to understand the role of your outer child and what your outer child is being reactive to. So this exercise that I'm going to share with you now is an excerpt from my self-love for weight loss mini training that is super powerful that you can do at any time. The premise to this is we can't reject a part of us and still be in harmony within. So a part of healing is to address and accept every part of us so that we can then be whole. And this includes your past, and of course, your inner child. This exercise works best if you have a photo of yourself as a child that you can look at. You're going to close your eyes and take yourself back to that time in your life and see what you can remember. This exercise is called the Big Little Dialogue. It sounds strange, but it's something that's really helped me with being less judgmental of myself. The idea is that you give an actual voice to your inner child called Little. And you have a conversation with her as your adult self, your current self called big. And then you take time to talk to your inner child, to talk to your little. And you ask her about her likes, her dislikes, her fears. Ask her what she needs and how you can help her feel safe. Ask her how you can make her happy. And you want to be there for her, love her, give her space, embrace her, comfort her in every way that you wish someone would have loved and embraced and comforted you when you needed it the most. And you're going to tell your little that no matter what happens, you will always be there for her, loving her, guiding her. And the point of connecting to your inner child is for you to tap into and see your innocence and your inherent goodness and inherent worthiness, reminding yourself that you were born worthy. There is not a baby that was born in this world that was born unworthy. So many of us lose our innocence and we forget that we were always worthy of love, even if we didn't receive it. So this is something that you want to do often, especially if you find yourself judging yourself, criticizing yourself, 
doubting your worth, hating yourself. Even for someone like me who has struggled so much with self-love, self-hate, to look at a photo of me when I was a little girl, I am able to have so much empathy and so much sympathy for that version of me. She didn't know any better. This poor little girl was just alone and scared the majority of her childhood. And so it can be really powerful to keep a photo of your little self where you can see it often by your bed, on your desk, on your desktop. Because when you catch yourself judging yourself or bullying yourself or picking yourself apart, you want to pick up that photo. And now try saying those things to that little version of you. And that will give you pause, especially if you were bullied, abused, or neglected, whether emotionally or physically as a child. If you say those things and you do those things to yourself now, it's just a neural pathway that became normal in your brain. But would you look at little you and say things like, why are you such a failure? Why are you so stupid? Why are you so fat? Why are you so ugly? Why can't you ever figure things out? Even if that's what little you got used to hearing from other people. Now is the time to tell little you what you wish someone kind and loving would have said to her at that age. Because that little girl version of you still lives in your heart. And she still hurts. And she still cries. And the only person that can heal her wounds is you today. Little you probably needed a hug. She probably needed assurance. She probably needed someone to talk to that wouldn't dismiss her or judge her. So you be that. You can be exactly who she needed then, now. And this is such powerful work because it's really hard to think about who you want to be in the future when there's a scared, sad little girl in your heart who just needs to know that she's okay, that she deserves love, and that you have her back. The big little work is work that you will do a lot. I have my big little dialogue on most days. Little me has things to say on most days. And a concept that I worked on with one of my clients that was really powerful for her was if you think of yourself as the CEO of your life, the CEO of your health, the CEO of your body, and you should because you are, and you think about having a meeting with all of yourselves with little you, your inner child, your outer child, and then all of the other versions of you that show up. Invite them all to the table. Anxious you, scared you, bold you. Invite them all to the table and have a brainstorming session where everyone gets to speak, even little you. Even if little you just wants to sit in the corner and color, because she just wants to be near big you. She just wants to make sure she's in the room that she has not been forgotten. She just needs acknowledgement. That is such a powerful exercise to do so that no part of you, all of the parts that make you whole, all the aspects of your personality that make you who you are, they all get acknowledged instead of being shut down, being told to be quiet. That's how we start integrating our different parts and accepting the many parts that make us whole. And that is unconditional self-acceptance when you are able to accept everything about you. And then you get to decide what you want to change, what you want to develop, what you want to let go of, what you want to heal. You see how powerful that can be? And so how do we start taming our outer child? Because she can be a bit much. Well, once you've established a loving and trusting connection with your inner child, then you can start getting to know your outer child. Start with understanding that she's just hurt and wounded And her defense mechanism is to be an impulsive know-it-all. Once you understand that at the root of her obstinance is self-blame and shame, you can start working on creating new neural pathways that can lead to more productive behaviors. A lot of the neuro-linguistic programming and mindset work that I do with my clients stems around healing and taming the outer child. As I was working on my NLP certification, that was the primary focus and intention that I chose to work on for myself, true, unconditional self-acceptance and self-love. Because I know what it's like to have strong neural pathways that can lead me back to a path of self-hate and self-sabotage if I'm not actively working on it. It's just the way my brain has been programmed. So it's never going to be a quick fix, but it doesn't have to be the way it's always been. 
So if this episode resonated with you, I invite you to book a call for my one-on-one coaching so that we can deep dive into this deep healing work of releasing, rewiring, unlearning, and relearning so that you can drop the emotional and mental weight along with the physical weight. And that's all for today. Bye for now. Thanks so much for tuning into today's episode. To learn more about how to work with me, go to eva.fit and click on the work with me button. While you're there, be sure to check out my free weight loss resources so that you can get a jumpstart on your journey. I'll see you there.